5.6, properties of linear relations. So let's make sure we're clear exactly on what we're talking when we're talking about linear relations. A linear relation on a graph will produce a straight line. So in the, for example, that's a linear relation. That is not. Linear, not linear. The definition of a linear relation is it has a constant rate of change. As we move forward, it goes down. This one goes down by the same amount. This one changes. It's got a different slope all the way through. Here's a situation. Table of values on a graph showing the cost of a pizza with up to five extra toppings. And the more toppings you get, the more cost goes up. So the question is, is this a linear equation? Let's go first to the graph because it's the easiest one to check. Do Are the lines in a straight line? Are they linear? I put a ruler along it. Yeah, they are. It's linear. They follow a straight line. But we don't want to have to draw a graph of it every single time. So let's take a look on the chart, or the table of values. So when I'm looking at the table of values, every time here, it's going up one each time. So it's going up at a constant rate. It's going one, two, three, four, five. It's going up at a constant rate. Take a look at the cost. In this case, it went up 75 cents. In this case, it went up 75 cents. And in this case, from 1350 to 1425, it went up 75 cents. And if I go through all of these, I find that in each case, it went up 75 cents. So if it is going up at a constant rate uh, on the table of values, as long as both the X and the Y, the dependent and the independent variables are going up at a constant rate, we have a linear equation. Let's look at another situation. Here's the cost for a rental car. Now to rent a car, according to this question, it's gonna cost you $60 plus another $20 for every 100 kilometers driven. So we've got a couple of details here. The independent variable is the distance driven and the dependent variable is the cost. So the cost all depends on how far you drive it. So then we're gonna, uh, we've got a table of values already put up at the cost of driving certain distances. If you have a good look at it here, your distance is going up by a constant amount each time. And my cost, every time we go up 100 kilometers in distance, the cost goes up another $20. Every 100 kilometers is another $20. That is telling me that this is a linear relationship. Okay, so let's look at this linear relationship. Let's calculate what the rate of change is. How is this relationship changing? Now, when we're talking about rate of change, we're talking about the slope of a graph. And for the slope of the graph, we use the letter M. Don't ask me why we use the letter M, but it, that is the case. So M is always rise over run. You can look at it the other way. It's the change in Y divided by the change in X. Remember, distance is my X, cost is my Y. So let's figure out exactly what that rate of change is. I'm going to pick two of those points. Let's go with let's go with the first two pairs of points. So how much did my Y change? Okay. It ended at 80, but it started at 60. So if I subtract those two, I end up with a rise of 20. Now I'm gonna put a dollar figure on that because that's what my cost is, it's in dollars. Let's take a look at my change in X. That's gonna be these two parts right here. I ended at 100. Started at zero, so it went up 100. I'm going to put a unit on there too. Kilometers. So 
So what that is saying is when you went up 100 kilometers, it cost you an extra $20. Exactly what it lists right there. But let's, uh, let's simplify that a little bit. If I do 100 divided by 20, I end up with 0 0.2. I'm going to put a unit on that. 0 0.2 dollars per kilometer, or and since we're talking about money, we should put two decimal places, 20 cents per kilometer. That is my rate of change. Okay, let's continue on with this question. Let's write an equation that describes what's going on. So we're talking about the cost of renting a car. And the cost of that renting that car is 20 cents per kilometer times the distance driven plus $60. Now, I've used words instead of letters for variables, but I think it makes more sense to see it this way. Now, let's label what each part of this equation is. I go through my question. It says the independent variable is the distance driven. So this piece right here is my independent variable. That independent variable is usually marked on the x-axis. Over here, the dependent variable is the cost. So this one, the dependent variable. The dependent variable is usually marked on the y-axis. And we have two more parts in here. We've already calculated this piece, so we know that that is the rate of change. We use the letter M to describe the rate of change. And the last piece we've got is this $60 over here. That, we're going to call that our starting point. It's going to cost that $60 to rent the car no matter what distance you drive. That's a fixed cost, and even if you drive zero, it's still going to cost you $60. If I give you the general form of that linear equation, it looks like y equals mx plus b. So once again, I've got my independent variable right there. I have my dependent variable right there. Got a rate of change right there. And this b is my starting point. All right, let's look at some tables of values. And we're going to use these tables of values to check whether it represents a linear function. We've got a relationship between temperature in degrees Celsius and temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. So just like I did in the beginning, let's take a look at how much uh, each item goes up by. If I look at my independent variable, my C, I'll notice that from each line it goes up 5. From 5 to 10 it goes up another 5. From 10 to 15 it goes up another 5. 15 to 20 goes up another 5. So my uh, x-axis is going up at a constant rate. If I look at my dependent variable, my degrees Fahrenheit, from 32 to 41, it goes up 9. From 41 to 50, it goes up 9. From 50 to 59, it goes up 9, goes up 9. Because both sides are both going up at a constant rate, we have a linear relation. Let's look at another example. Here we're going to relate the, uh, the current in amps and the power in watts of an electrical circuit. This is my independent variable. This is my dependent variable. When I look at my independent variable, my x-axis, it's going up by 5, each time it goes up by 5. But if I start looking on this other side, uh, it goes up by 75, now it goes up by 225, now it goes up by 
375 and now it goes up by 525 because these are not going up at a constant rate even though my independent variables are this one is not a linear relation Now we'll go through some methods on how to check if it's a linear relation if your uh, independent variables are not going up by a constant rate. But for now, let's do a couple more examples like this. Here we've got a relationship between the number of bacteria in a culture uh, and n over time. So we once again have an independent variable in my t and we have a dependent variable in our n. Independent is almost always on the left. Dependent is almost always on the right. So let's take a look at how it's changing. My t variable from 0 to 20 goes up by 20. From 20 to 40 goes up by 20. From 40 to 60. Each of these is going up by 20. So my x value, I've got a constant rate. It's going up at the same amount every time. Now that's not enough yet to tell me if I have a linear relation. The y value, my dependent variable, also has to go up at, this, at a constant rate. So from one to two, from one to two, it's going, went up one. From two to four, now it went up two. From four to eight, now it's going up four. From eight to 16, it now went up eight. From 16 to 32, it went up 16. Because those are not changing at the same amount every time, we do not have a constant rate of change. In fact, if you look at the numbers, it's doubling each time. It's not going up by the same amount, it's, it's going up by a different amount every time. This one is not a linear relation. Okay, one last example uh, of this type. Once again, we've got our independent variable, and we have our dependent variable. Independent variables from 60 to 120, it went up 60. From 120 to 180, it went up 60 again. From 180 to 240, it went up 60. From 240 to 300, it went up 60. Constant rate of change there. Let's check our dependent variable. From three to six, it went up three. From 6 to 9, it went up 3. From 9 to 12, it went up 3. And from 12 to 15, it went up 3. When I look at my independent and dependent axes, both of them, they are both going up at the same rate over the entire course of this table of values. This is a linear relation.